Today's project is only four parts. They're on the small side, so it might be a little bit challenging. And it will be this mini nativity set. I'll show you how to make it step by step. This mini nativity requires quarter inch material to build. I only had a few small pieces in my scrap boxes, so I had to prepare more for this project. I determined how much I would need, then cut a piece of four quarter maple to length. When resawing, you have to remember the board only needs to be half the length required to lay out the parts because the resawing process splits the board into two boards the same width and length but half the original thickness. I always use a feather board to hold the stock lightly against the fence. My table saw doesn't have an available splitter, so I made a zero clearance insert for the saw with a plastic splitter. It took only a few passes to complete the task. I have a full video on resawing, which I will link on the screen and in the description if you want to learn more about resawing. The table saw leaves an uneven rough surface after the resawing process, so if you're going to get into resawing to make thin stock, you will need a thickness planer. And if you have a thickness planer, you'll need a dust collector. I use a caliper to check the final thickness because it is much more accurate than a ruler. The walnut is, a, is at exactly 0.25 inches, and I'll plane the maple down to the same thickness. I printed and cut out enough patterns to make four mini nativity sets. Mary, the baby Jesus in the manger, and Joseph are all cut as one piece from maple. A sheep and palm tree are together on another, and the oval base from a third piece. I arranged the three pieces for one set on the quarter-inch maple using scroll saw tape to attach them to the wood so you could see how I lay out patterns to use the minimum possible material. The staple is cut from walnut, which will contrast nicely with the maple figures and base. I unrolled the scroll saw tape onto the walnut, flipped the wood over, and then cut the tape to width using a utility knife. I used the knife to pry up the corner of the backing and then I peeled it off. The tape is translucent so you can see the wood through it and avoid placing patterns over any knots or the defects in the wood you wish to avoid. The tape holds the pattern firmly in place while you're cutting, but it peels off easily when you're done without leaving any residue behind. I'll leave a link to my source for the scroll saw tape in the description. Once you're ready to start cutting on the scroll saw, you have to decide what blade to use. I've personally tested different brands and styles of blades, and my first choice is the Pegas Modified Geometry Series. The parts for this mini nativity are all one quarter inch thick, and the size I use for that thickness is a number three blade. I started cutting with the interior cuts on the walnut stable. There are two interior cuts, one's for the star and the other's for the large window. I began with the star. It's very difficult to get nice, sharp points on a star if you try to cut down the lines and turn the blade at the points. Here's a better way. From the pilot hole, cut down one of the lines until you reach the point of the angle. Then, rather than trying to turn the workpiece to make that very small, acute angle, back the blade to the pilot hole. Now shift the workpiece slightly and cut down the line next to the one you just backed out of. Cut down that line to the point, and you will have cut out one small section with a sharp point. Keep doing this one line at a time until the star is complete. The corners of the window are curved rather than sharp 90 degree angles, so that will make them easier cut. I threaded the blade through the pilot hole, then cut to the line and followed it around. For cuts like this one, I usually keep the blade right on the line. The stable is going to be attached to the oval base using slot and tab construction, which will give the joint more strength than a simple butt joint. I know from experience that the parts for this joint need to be cut carefully. A loose fit looks sloppy and sacrifices some of the strength of the joint. Too tight a fit risks breaking the tab when you're putting the parts together or having to go back and make adjustments to get the two parts to fit. I started at the bottom cut from the outside edge to make the vertical cuts for the sides of the tab. I cut right on the line and these cuts will determine the width of the tab. Then I made the next cuts from either side, again right on the line, and I cut until I reached the intersection and the waste pieces came loose. I'll make a test fit into the slot when I cut the base. The last cut for the tab is across the bottom, which cuts it to length to fit the depth of the slot. This piece has some tiny cuts, so I must decide how to make them best. I decided to pass two triangular cutouts on the stable side and return to them later. It will be much easier to cut these once the waste material on the outside of them has been removed. I did something similar when I came to the edges of the roof. I cut outside the line so that I could return later and make those detailed cuts from an edge. I'll explain what I mean when I get to that step. 
The roof itself consisted of vertical cuts at each end, a short horizontal cut on each side, and then the long straight lines for the top. These are all fast, easy cuts. Now I can tackle these fine details on each corner of the roof. Because I cut away much of the waste already, I can now maneuver in from the outside and not have to try to make impossibly tight turns. I started by cutting any parallel lines by starting on the outside, cutting to an intersection, and then backing the blade out to the edge again. After making the second vertical cut line, I made a 90 degree turn and cut across to the next upright vertical line. Once I reached that line, the cuts connected and the waste piece popped out. All of these details were made in the same manner. By cutting the parallel lines first, I only had to make one 90 degree turn inside each of these shapes instead of having to make two. With all the details cut on the stable, I could pull off the pattern to get a better look at the piece. The scroll saw tape I used peeled off almost completely in one piece. The stable looks good, so now I am ready to move on to the other parts of the nativity set. I decided to cut the base next, so I could do a test fit of the stable's tab into the base's slot. The base is a long oval shape, and cutting it is simply a matter of following the line and letting the blade do the work. It's important to keep the wood moving smoothly to make the curve as even as possible and to avoid any flat spots. For the interior cut making the slot, I cut right on the line. I want a good fit for the tab and cutting right on the line is a good starting place. It's better to have a tight fit and have to go back and make the slot a little larger than to have a sloppy fit that can't be corrected. I cut from the pilot hole to one of the corners, backed the blade up slightly so it wasn't cutting, swiveled the workpiece 90 degrees, and then started cutting again. I followed the same procedure at each of the corners to complete cutting the slot. I finished the slot, then reached over to the countertop to grab the stable for a test fit. No, the slot's not wide enough, but the fix is easy. I took the base to my countertop and used a ruler and pencil to draw a new cut line parallel to one of the sides of the slot. This line wasn't much more than the thickness of the scroll saw blade away from the first cut line. You only want to make very small corrections at a time. The correction was right on the mark. The tab fits into the slot with just slight pressure, and it's snug enough to not move. With glue added, this is going to be a very strong joint. Now I can move on to the figures, and these have some tiny details that add realism to the piece. Some of these details are going to require precision cutting. I made the interior cut on the manger first, then the cut along the bottom. This piece will be glued directly to the base with a butt joint, not a slot and tab like the stable. The number three blade is small enough to make these cuts, but I did slow the motor down so the cutting would be less aggressive. I have some two zero blades on hand, but I find them difficult to control for some reason. This is one of those places where I'm thankful for my magnifier. I can see the details more clearly, and that makes it easier to follow the cut line. I just need to take my time and let the blade do the work. The third maple piece will be the one in front when attached to the base. I started cutting on the left side, and the sheep wasn't too difficult. Then I cut across to the palm tree. I cut up the left side of the trunk to the first intersection where the fronds started. I made that first angle cut by backing off slightly on the blade, using the saw blade's curve to swivel the workpiece, and then starting to cut again. I cut past the end of that frond and used the waste area to turn the workpiece almost 180 degrees so I could cut down the other side of the palm frond. The next angle was relatively open, so I could easily turn the workpiece there. I followed the next cut line, but I kept going right to the end of the board. This enabled me to remove the workpiece from the rest of the board, which contained an oval base as well as a large waste area. That waste area is large enough to be usable, so I'll set it aside in my box for quarter-inch thick small pieces. The piece I had left to cut was now considerably smaller. As I made the last cuts at the top of the palm tree, I had to be careful where I put pressure to keep control of the workpiece. The bottom between the sheep and the palm tree was only about one quarter of an inch thick, so I could have easily broken it if I wasn't careful. I checked the backs of the maple pieces containing the figures to see if they needed any sanding, and they did not. This is one of several reasons the Pegasus Modified Geometry Blades became my favorite. These blades cut cleanly, leaving little to no tear out on the back of work pieces. I don't know about you, but I'm not particularly eager to spend time sanding those little fuzzies from the back of projects I cut on the scroll saw. However, I did some sanding on the oval base, but not to clean up tear out. 
Since the base will be handled, I thought it best to round over the edges slightly just to remove their sharpness. This piece is too small and too thin to safely make the round over on the router table, so I used a quarter sheet of 120 grit sandpaper, folded in half, and I did the sanding by hand. I started the glue up with a stable by squeezing out a bead of glue onto the surfaces of the tab and the bottom of the stable that would come in contact with the base. I like using a small glue bottle when I'm working on tiny surfaces like this. When the bottle starts to get low, I refill it from a gallon container. I use enough glue that it's cheaper to buy it in gallon bottles and refill my small and medium sized applicators from that. I added the piece with Joseph, the baby cheeses, and Mary next. All it needed was one bead of glue across the bottom. I thought it looked best with a space between it and the stable, so that's how I placed it. As I was going to add glue to the bottom of the next piece, I noticed it was a little rough and might not make good contact with the base, so I rubbed it against a piece of sandpaper to smooth it out. The reason the bottom was rough was probably because I placed the bottom of the piece against the edge of the maple I was cutting it from. The edge hadn't been jointed, so it was a little rough, and I didn't notice that when I attached the pattern. I could not think of a way to clamp these pieces, so I'll just rely on gravity to keep them in place while the glue dries. I'm pleased with the way this mini nativity turned out. While the glue dries on this one, I'll go back to the scroll saw and cut the parts for the remaining three sets. After all of them are complete, I'll take them to my paint booth and finish them with multiple coats of Minwax, Warm Satin Polyurethane. This is what the completed mini nativity set looks like after several coats of Warm Satin Spray Polyurethane. Because of its size, it required close concentration cutting some parts. I always enjoy making items like this where I can make a few on a weekend. This will be a great addition to the Christmas items I already have in my store and online. Now I'd like to ask a favor of you. Please give the video a like and leave a comment if you feel so inclined. If you've not already done so, this would be a good time to subscribe to the channel. And if you're in the mood for some more woodworking, a link to the next suggested video to watch is on the screen right now.